بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. A very important issue that all of us need to be aware of, especially the, the believing women, is the issues regarding fasting and uh, and and being on fasting and uh, menstruation and postnatal bleeding. So these are some very important issues related to these issues and we're going to take a look at it and try to go over these masail as quick as possible but thorough and quick bi'idhnillah. The first issue which is the general issue, what is the ruling regarding uh, the woman who has postnatal bleeding or meaning after birth uh, and or menses and or menses or, or menses uh, it is haram for a woman to fast when she is uh, on her during her men menstrual cycle, and it is haram for the woman to fast if she is bleeding after having uh, a child, the childbirth bleeding. And this is in accordance with the ijma or the consensus of Ahl al-Ilm, the scholars. And those scholars that mentioned that this is ijma were scholars like. Uh, Imam Ibn Rushd and Imam Nawawi and Imam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahumullah Jami'an. Then a very important issue that arises here what is the ruling regarding fasting uh, during the day if a woman becomes Tahir meaning that if a woman who was on her uh her, her menstruation uh, ends and she becomes pure during the day of Ramadan. For example, a, uh, after Fajr, during after Fajr sometime, or after Dhuhr, or, or what have you, during the day. So what is the ruling if she becomes pure? And, the, and likewise with the woman who is, uh, has the postnatal bleeding. These, these rulings are the same, so it's no sense in us continuing mentioning both, but the rulings are, are, are the same. So if a woman, if she becomes pure uh, during the day of Ramadan, the scholars have differed regarding this issue. And they have two different uh, views regarding this issue. The first view is that, uh, or let, let's mention the two, two, two views. The first, the first view being that it is not necessarily, not necessary for her to fast the rest of the day. The second view is that it is necessary, even if it's after Dhuhr or what have you, for her to fast and not eat and drink and, and the other activities the rest of the day uh, and, and to Maghrib, that she will actually fast part of a day. So those are the two views. The first view that she does not need to fast even though she became pure before Dhuhr or after Dhuhr or what have you. Uh, this is the in accordance with the statement of the Malikiyah, the view of the Malikiyah and the Shafi'iyah and one of the opinions of Imam Ahmed. And this is also the view of uh, Ibn Hazm, Rahimahumullah Jami'an. And also Sheikh bin Uthaymeen, Imam bin Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So all of them held the view that a woman does not need to, she does not need to fast. And I hold this view as well, looking at their various evidences. This is the view that I have as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And we're going to look at what their evidence, what, what their reasoning behind this is. So, and this is because they say there is no evidence for the obligation for a woman to, uh, to, uh, to fast. Nor is there a, a, a benefit for her to fast part of the day. So there's no evidence to show that she fasts part of the day and there's no evidence to show uh, that there's, any, there's no benefit of it. And that is because it is in, uh, it's still an obligation for her to make that day up. So it, it so this is their view. The second view is uh, that she must fast after that. So if she, for example, becomes pure uh, in the morning after Fajr sometime, then she should 
uh, then she should fast. This is the second uh, opinion. This is the view of the Hanafiya, and this is the view of uh, of the Hanabila, some of the the the, the, uh, the school of thought of Imam Ahmed. So this is the other view uh, of Imam Ahmed and and the the Madhab. and this is also the. Uh, view of Imam bin Baz rahimahumullah jami'an may Allah have mercy upon all of them and this is, and their view is that a woman who is menstruating or had the postnatal ble ble uh, bleeding that they have become from the ahlu wujub wujub they've become from the people who it becomes an obligation upon them to fast when they became tahir when they became pure from their, uh, from the uh, haith or nifas, you know, from the post, from the bleeding. So then they should, uh, they should, uh, they should fast the rest of the day and they b then resemble those people who fast, the, the Siamin, the other people who are fasting. And then they and they should make qada. They should make up that day and they should fast the rest of the day. So this is their view. And as I said, I believe the first view is stronger because there is no evidence to see, to support that that second view. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Another issue that comes up, which is very important for us to take a look at, and this is the ruling regarding uh, fasting. If they, if if the woman becomes pure before Fajr, if she becomes pure right before Fajr, then it is an obligation upon her to fast. And even if she doesn't uh, make her ghusl until right right at right uh, uh, after Fajr, you know, after the the prayer. You know, because maybe right then it has become an obligation upon her. She's become uh, pure right at the, the walk to Fajr. Or, or right uh, right before the walk to Fajr. F Fajr is entered. And this is the statement of, uh, the, of, of most of the scholars, the general scholar, uh, most of the scholars here. And the evidence for this is... <coughs> <coughs> they make uh, qiyas, uh reasoning or a, a resemblance between the the situation of the the person who is junub who has sexual impurities and they make a, a, a reasoning jurisprudent reasoning between that as well and the person who is junub that they must fast even if they uh, they delay their ghusl till the till the time that Fajr enters, and so they say likewise. This is the situation for the woman who was who was uh, had um, who just came off her period that she became tuhur, and then the evidence for the junub, and this is where they make their qiyas for the haid. An Suleiman an An Suleiman ibn uh, ibn Yusar. رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه سأل أم سلمة رضي الله تعالى عنها عن الرجل يسبح جنبا أيصوم قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يسبح جنبا من غير احتلام ثم يصوم رواه مسلم in this hadith of Sahih in Sahih Muslim uh, that was narrated on uh, Suleiman ibn Yasar he asked uh, Um Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha zawja nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, about if a man wakes up <coughs> if he gets up in the morning and he is junub he is in a state of from sexual having had sexual relations should he fast? and so Um Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha responded by saying that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to wake up and he was junub you know after having sexual relations akramakum Allah without having had a wet dream so this is affirming that he didn't it wasn't from a wet dream but it was from uh, have, having had relations with one of his wives akramakum Allah 
and then he would fast, letting us know that the Junub can fast and uh, that they, they cannot pray in that state. They have to make ghusl, but they can fast without making ghusl. And likewise, the woman who has become pure and she has not made her ghusl yet, she can fast. She can fast without having made her ghusl. But due to the fact that if that Salat will be coming in, she needs to make ghusl before she prays. A last issue that is important to mention and that we uh, run into quite often, what about the women who take uh, medication or pills to prevent their menstru menstrual cycle coming so that way they can fast a month of Ramadan completely uh, and so forth. The ruling pertinent to this is that if this medication is going to cause harm, it causes harm to the, to the woman who is pregnant, you know, it could be for preventing pregnancy, she's taking birth control pills, or she's taking medication to prevent her menstrual, her menstrual cycle from coming or delaying it, then this is permissible as long as it is not causing harm to her. But if it is causing harm, regardless of whether it's for those two reasons or not, she should not do it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, La darar wa la dirar. There's no harm and there's no reciprocating harm. And the Lejna, the, the Committee of Major Scholars in Saudi Arabia, and the Committee of Major Scholars in Kuwait as well, and as well as Sheikh Ben Uthaymeen, hold this view that it's not permissible if it is causing the woman harm and if it's not causing the woman harm then it's permissible and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam